The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. What if I tell you, my friend, that every single one of us could relate to a disciple that Jesus selected? What about if I tell you that that every single one of us, when you look at it and you study the scripture, you find out that Jesus had 12 disciples. And out of those 12 disciples, every single one of us could relate to one. Let's say that maybe you relate to the disciple Peter, the aggressive it was an aggressive disciple, a disciple that he, he stood out in faith, was bold, but also stubborn, like some of y'all. <laughs> but, you know, he took risk. He felt and sometimes he exchanged foot out of his mouth. <laughs> but what about if your faith is not as aggressive? You're not a risk taker like Peter. What about if you're a disciple in the faith of Andrew? It's simple. When, when Jesus looked at the 5,000 men, not including the wives and the children, he asked evangelist Philip, how much can we go ahead and feed all these people? And Philip says, Lord, it takes eight months of working, of wages, just to feed these people. Yet, the faith of Andrew was so simple. He said, well, Lord, I know it takes that much, but there is a young lad here. Has two fish and five loaves of bread. Now, Andrew well, might not be a math major, <laughs> but he wasn't dumb. He knew you cannot feed. You can feed me with two fish and five loaves of bread. Not especially 5,000 men, not included. There was 20,000 people. But the faith of Andrew was so simple, he said, I know I can do it, but I know you can. Hallelujah. I, I, I cannot add or, or, more, or cannot place my three-pound brain to adjust of how this is going to happen. But I know one thing. I've seen you do things, Jesus, and you could do it again. Amen. So he gave those two fish. Gave it to Jesus with the five loaves of bread. And all of a sudden, there was a fish fry festival right there. <laughs> but what about if your faith is not simple like Andrew or aggressive like Peter? What about if your is compassion like John? John was one that, that loved Jesus. He even wrote himself saying the one that Jesus loved. A little bit more, he'll put slash hashtag favorite. <laughs> But one thing about John is that he had compassion, a faith that truly looked that says, Lord, and, and loved people. Had the faith and moved towards the compassion of his heart, towards the people and their need. He said, well, ex, I, I don't know. I'm not really compassionate. I don't like when people just turn and don't use the signal. You know, the thing is, says, oh, well, maybe that's not yours. What about a faith that's patient? Like the disciple of Mary Madeline, one that truly was there and waited, waited. Could you imagine being in the tomb? This woman of God was there and every disciple looked and said, well, Jesus ain't here. The game is about to start, Mary. Text me. And they left back. <laughs> but you know who stayed? Mary did. The Bible says that angels spoke to Mary. Angels. How many times have an angel spoken to you? Who spoke to her? And she didn't even say, oh, my God, look at those feathers. Nothing. You know what she said? She goes, hey, have you seen Jesus? <laughs> because her faith didn't want to entertain angels. She wanted to be the one that created them. Where is my Messiah? What about you? She said, well, I know definitely faith of patience ain't me, ex. Okay. But every single one of us could relate with the disciple. The thing is, is. What about if your disciple is not the one that you really want to relate yourself with? What about is your faith is the faith of Thomas? The faith that needs to see to believe. Join me, my friend, to the book of John. John chapter 
20. We're going to read from verse 24 to 29. John. John chapter 20, verses 24 and on. And he states, Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, this is Thomas, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, but then it stopped there, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, we're talking about Thomas. He was selected, chosen personally by Jesus. He wasn't just somebody that walked in and said, can I join you? No. He was selected, handpicked by Jesus himself. Yet, Thomas in this moment is denying the foundation of a Christian faith. Why? Because resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of of the Christian faith. Because if Jesus did not resurrect. Everything he did on the cross. Was not valid. Because many other gods. Many other so called gods. And saviors have died. But none were resurrected. Everything that Jesus did. On that cross. On the third day. He made it valid. Sealed it. That's why there's power in his name. That's why there's power in the blood. You know why? Because of his resurrection. Yet Thomas was denying the foundation on the Christian faith. And he didn't say, well, can you imagine this moment? All the disciples says, it goes, man, we saw Jesus, the excitement inside of the bone saying, yes, he resurrected. And Thomas says, well, unless I see his hands and the print of the nails. Now he wanted to see. I want to see them. I want to make sure that once I see the prints of his nails, that I, but it doesn't stop there. You see, Peter, I understand that you said you saw Jesus, but, but not only I want to see it, but I want to place my finger right there. I want to touch where the nails went through. And just in case, it's just somebody that fell and stuck a nail in their hands. I remember and heard that they speared his sign. So after I see it and feel his hands, I want to place my hand where the spear entered into his side. I will not believe. Unbelief is a choice. Unbelief is a choice. Faith, you must believe, is a choice. But unbelief is also a choice. It's a choice that today the disciples of Jesus Christ must face on their daily basis. Why do I say that? Because believe it or not, my dear friends, there is no mistake why Jesus chose Thomas. Because he knew that one day there was going to be Thomases in his body of Christ all over the world. Just like there is here in, 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 in New York, just like there is in South Carolina, that's why it's in Florida, that's why it's in Dominican Republic, that's why there's in Africa. And every single church, there are the 12 disciples. And the faith within them. But nobody wants to admit, I have the faith of Thomas. I have a faith that I must see to believe. None of us wants to be placed with that faith because it's embarrassing. Oh, you want to be the, we want to be the one that, hey, I'm raising my hand to make sure that I, I, I'm worshiping God. I want to make sure people know I got no problem with my faith. But do you know, my dear friends, that just in these matters, just like this, many of us end up, even ministers, our faith sometimes get a little bit weary. Storms comes and people and demons throw all this bucket of ice with water on you to try to stop your faith and that flame that's there. But even is there, sometimes we need a push 
to revive that flame, that falling in love of that Messiah, of that Jesus that we fell in love with. Revival. It is to revive something that was alive but is about to die. Or is dead. But people don't want to ask for help because religion has taught that if you ask for help for your faith, you'll be condemned. Oh, you're not an unbeliever. You are not truly saved. So what happens? Disciples with this type of faith, shh, don't say nothing. Because they don't want to be judged or condemned. I tell you, my dear friends, if you are Thomas here today, I want to tell you that there is redemption for you. The Bible tells us in verse 26, And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Look at the importance for eight days, for eight days. The disciples are saying, my goodness, Andrew, I can't believe that our Jesus is alive. I can't, and all of a sudden, John is there, and Bartholomew, yes, I can't believe it. He's alive. And for eight days, Thomas says, no, I, 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 it's, it's hard for me. Don't you think he felt awkward? Well, they were talking about the living Messiah, but inside of him, he had doubt. He had unbelief. Don't you think that inside of him, he was struggling with his faith? Of course. Do you know why? Because Thomas loved Jesus. Thomas loved Jesus. If not, he would have never followed him. If not, he would have stayed there knowing the persecution. See, Thomas loved Jesus, but his faith was being challenged. And he needed help. He needed help with his faith. He would love to be just like the faith of Peter and just believe no matter what storm. He would like to say, Andrew, I, I would love to say it's a simplicity. Yeah, in the third day he'll get raised up. He, he'll resurrect, no problem. We'll make the coffee, Jesus. We'll be waiting for you. See, see Thomas couldn't understand that. He couldn't comprehend because his faith was being challenged. He needed help. The Bible says, after eight days, there was a room, the doors were shut, the screens were closed, the disciples were in the room, and Thomas was in. And out of nowhere, Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus appears in the midst and says, peace to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he appears out of nowhere. And scares everybody. But look what he says. The Bible now could have Jesus waited until Thomas wasn't there. Because he did it. But instead Jesus waited until Thomas was in the same room with the, the same disciples that did believe. And you had an unbeliever. And there the Bible says that when Jesus came in, look what it states. Verse 27. Then he, this is Jesus, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Oh, that's grace. And no matter, Jesus then not come in and says, peace to you. And turn around and says, Thomas, you heathen. Open the window and throw him out. Could he said that? Could Jesus said that? Yes, he could have. He could have embarrassed Thomas. Thomas, you've been with me for these years. You've seen miracles come. You have seen me multiply fish. You have seen the paralytic rise. I have resurrected the dead. You have seen the glory of my father in my life. How dare you say I did not resurrect? And he could have shamed Thomas, made him puny little disciple. But did he do that? No. Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus went and says, Thomas, 
I love you. I love you so much, Thomas, that I know you're having problems with your faith. And because I love you and I've chosen you, go ahead, Thomas. Touch. If you need to see, go ahead, see, son. If you need to touch just to believe, go ahead, son. Touch my wound. Touch my wound. Because I love you so much that I'd rather you believe. If you need help, I'll help you. If you need to see to believe, go ahead. Touch Thomas. Because I want you to be with me for eternity. Because I'm going to use you because I've chosen you. And just because you need help with your faith, I will not condemn you. Instead, go ahead. Thomas, touch in our Christian faith, my dear friends, there's going to be moments that we need to ask the Lord, Lord, touch. Lord, show me your glory. Don't we say that? Don't we say that? In my Christian faith, there's many times I've come to the Lord and I said, Lord, I need your help. I need you to, to help me in this, in this position I am in. He said, well, X, you're an evangelist. Five-fold ministries that go and, and, and conduct crusades and different. Right now, we're about to go to Kenya. And we're going to go and host 30,000 people on a soccer field. We're going to preach Jesus. But it didn't start that way. I needed help. In the beginning, the door told me, you're going to go and do this first day. The first time I did a crusade in Kenya. The finances were coming in. I was only able to go and pay for my airline ticket. I couldn't pay for the crusade. I didn't have the finances. I would preach here and I would preach there and I, I couldn't find it. And all of a sudden, I started getting scared and feared. I would not, not be able to fund the crusade. And I said, Lord, I need you to show me I am sorry. I would love to have the faith of, of, of Andrew and says, it's okay, it's coming in the mail. But I needed help. I'm an evangelist. And my faith was being challenged. Went to Miami. Three days before, I had to send $5,000 to fulfill the, the crusade, the last $5,000 of the whole crusade. I needed $5,000 in three days. I was sweating. My cholesterol went up. I was scared. I needed. I said, Lord, forgive me that my faith is being challenged. Forgive me, Lord. Show me your hand. I need help. Show me your hand, Lord. Revive my faith one more time. I went to Miami three days before the crusade. I needed those $5,000. A businessman saw that I was in Miami in Facebook, and he called me up. And he said, X, I see that you're in Miami. He goes, let's go have some sushi. I hate sushi. <laughs> but when a businessman asks you to go eat sushi, you're going to eat sushi. I love sushi. Where do we meet? So he got together, he sent me the address, and I go to this place. I was walking. I feel sorry for all those fish that were about to die. As I go to the table, he sits down in front of me. He says, X, I'll order for you. Please don't. I'll order for you, X. So he ordered a specialty of the restaurant. They bring these things. And they put it right in front of me. I'm telling you, there was one that was moving. He didn't believe me. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. He goes, it's okay. 
Just put a lemon on top. <laughs> so we pray. Please, pray for the food. So we pray for the food. Lord, fry these things. <laughs> like you did, like Elijah. Bring fire and fry my sushi, Lord. We finished praying, and you started eating. Oh, God. I started biting that. I didn't even know what I ate that day, and I was eating it. And he was, we were eating. He goes, do you like it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the middle of my meal, he said, X, what do you need? Now remember, the day before, three days prior, I've asked Jesus, Jesus, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm going to make it. $5,000 in three days. I don't think I'm going to make it. My faith is not strong. Jesus, show me your hand. I need help in my faith. He told me, X, what do you need? I said, I need $5,000. If you're going to ask for five grand, eat the sushi. So I'm there looking at him eating. Mm. After we ate, he takes out his checkbook and he writes $5,000. I thank him. I threw up. <laughs> I went to the bank. I sent the money in that order. <laughs> I end up going to the crusade. It was 15,000 people. We did 2,000 registration cards for born-again believers. All 2,000 were registered. And when I was in the air coming back, I said, Jesus, thank you that you did not judge me. My faith was weak. I thank you because I knew I, I, for some reason my faith could not draw in that money. And when I ask you, Jesus, to show me your hand to revive my faith, you didn't judge me. You helped me. You helped me. The Bible tells us in scriptures that when Jesus showed that to Thomas, verse 28, and Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, and my God. Thomas, when he saw Jesus not come down with judgment, screaming, blaming, all these things against his faith, just because he, go ahead, Thomas, the scripture says he didn't even do it. He didn't even touch the wound of Jesus. Just because Jesus was so graceful and so loving and so himself and says, go ahead, Thomas, I'd rather you to believe than not believe Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Because of this incident, Thomas is scarred. And today he's known as the Downing Thomas. But do you know that it only was one time? According to scriptures and even history itself states that Thomas, because of that help of Jesus, to show him his womb, Thomas grew to be one of the strongest disciples, a pioneer to enter into the lands of India, started preaching, miracles followed, established churches that in today in India he is a pioneer. There are churches named after him. And do you know 
that as he preached, the government went against Thomas. They couldn't stop this crazy preacher talking about resurrected Savior. They couldn't stop Thomas from preaching for the Messiah that resurrected on the third day. They couldn't stop at this Thomas disciple that he, no one himself, even him preaching about Jesus, no one could stop him from believing. And the resurrected Savior, no one in the government went after Thomas. As revival broke loose out of his ministry, they pinned him and speared him. And he had an option to deny Jesus. But he himself, because Jesus gracefully showed him. Go ahead, Thomas. You could see it. You could feel it. Because of the grace of Jesus looking upon the love of Thomas. Thomas became a martyr. Died for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even though today he's considered Tom, uh, doubting Thomas. Thomas is not no daughter anymore. He's a martyr. The greatest rank, if you want one, is to die for Jesus Christ. And he died believing of who the Lord is. If you are a Thomas today, there is redemption for you. I'm going to ask the worship department to join me, please. In our hearts, in our lives, we must say, well, ex. In our faith, we love people. You beautiful mothers that are here might have children that have problems. You're seeing that inside of them, they might not be coming to the Lord. Maybe your, your husband, maybe their family members. But mothers, you have struggled. And one of the things I've known is the nurturing type of a mom. I want to tell you that there is hope. Anyone who's struggling with their faith, God does not hate you. God loves you. God loves you. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday School at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.